Seven years ago, I started my STEM journey. I went for an educational conference in Dubai um, with the aim to connect schools from Nigeria to schools in Dubai for educational excursions. But getting to the um, conference, I found out that it's not only a conference, but we also have an um, educational exhibition where different organizations, companies come to exhibit their 21st century materials for learning. This was a surprise to me because I saw younger children, students from the secondary school working and operating their electronic gadgets and robots. I saw different types of electro um, reading materials. So I went to the big Lego stand that I saw to inquire, to know how this is related to education. Because looking at Lego, you see building blocks. And I thought, well, this is just a building block. How does it relate to education? I got to ask the vendor this question, and he looked at me with a very beautiful eyes. Or, or maybe he thought I was an alien. He looked at me and walked away from me. And that was the point where I asked myself, something must be wrong with me. A graduate of a university from my country, and I have no idea what Lego is and how it's connected to education. I have to be worried. I went to another vendor to make the same inquiry, but he sat me down and explained everything. I was worried not just for myself, but for my two daughters at the moment. If at that age, with my experience, and I have no idea how this is connected to education. I've never experienced it. I wonder what is going to happen to our, the generation we have now. After that, I asked him if they are in Africa. He said no. If they have done something with Nigerians, they said no. And I said, okay, maybe I will be the first person to bring this product to Nigeria. I am taking this to my community. I was excited about it. And I got home and I started my Edufon Technic business. It was beautiful because I knew this is a journey that is going to lead us and the next generation to the tech world. And that is how Edufon Technic was bettered. Our Edufon Technic program pays more attention to girls. And here is the reason. Some time ago, I had a very, very personal encounter. My daughter injured her eyes trying to see an helicopter. It might amaze you that in some communities we find the airplane or helicopter once in a while. And when this comes, the children are excited to go outside to beckon on the helicopter. And while she was running outside, she got badly injured. As I was giving her first aid, I told her you know, if you can be excited to see an helicopter, why not study hard and become a pilot yourself? She was excited. Oh, becoming a pilot. You know, I told her the stories of her, what she would be or what she would be doing as a pilot. She was excited. On returning home the second day from school, she told me that this is not going to work because it's not possible. And I was surprised. Why won't it work? What happened? She said, one of my friends told me that she can't be a pilot because she's a girl. That it's only boys that can be a pilot. Ah. At that point, I knew something is wrong. How can a five years old child with her friends understand that some certain careers is for boys and some is for girls? This is not just normal. You know, has it become a lifestyle? And that was how we bettered our STEM for Girls program, that girls need to be aware at a very young age the things they need to do and how they need to do it, especially concerning their careers and how they choose to, whatever they choose to be, they can be. So I paid more attention on girls program and that led us to the competition, the tech innovation competition in Silicon Valley. However, before then, Getting schools to get their girls involved in these programs, I had 
they don't want to be part of it except it's going to, for, to be for free. Of course, we started with free programs for girls. When we started this program, we met one of the schools in Onicha and we asked for permission to teach those girls. And they gave us permission. As long as it's free, yes, they are ready and willing to be part of it. And that was how we started our first program with the girls in that particular school. After the first program on web development, content management, we heard about the Technovation Challenge, and we also decided to enroll the same girls. When we did that, they were willing to attend. We didn't just talk about the technology, we talked about career development, we talked about uh, giving them confidence, courage to make those choices, irrespective of who you are, as a human being, you have the choice, the right, the right choice to decide on what to do. Then the Technovation Challenge started. We registered the girls for the competition. I was excited about the Technovation Challenge because it, the curriculum was so huge, you have to see what the business ideas are all about, how it was structured. And for me in particular, I was excited because the girls have to learn business development, marketing strategy, different types of uh, ideas, solving problems, and also to build a mobile app. And we were excited to start the program. We started, we had two teams um, from the senior and the junior category. We were qualified to go to Abuja for regional pitch. We went to Abuja. Getting to Abuja, of course you know, Onicha is an environment known for trading. The whole community is trading. And if you are going outside the state, you will be seen as part of the trading. Com I mean, the, you, you are being looked at as a trader, even as a student. So these children, the students getting to Abuja, they were a little bit scared. And Abuja is the capital city of Nigeria. They were a little bit scared. But with the confidence and courage we had before leaving the, um, the city, they were able to emerge both first in the junior category and first in the senior category. After one month of judgment, the junior team were qualified to go to Silicon Valley because of the idea of their app. They developed a mobile app idea that would help um, customers and pharmaceutical industries on how to detect fake drugs. They qualified, and the journey to Silicon Valley started. On hearing the news, we were so excited. I mean, for a week, we could not believe this was real. This journey started with the passion just to impact and to give confidence to those girls we started preparing to go to Silicon Valley. It was more hard work. The girls got their confidence, we practiced harder, and the journey started. The journey was the first for all. And the winning started from going to Abuja because at every point, we were expecting to win. You know, even if we don't win the gold medal, we all already felt that we are winners. So. Entering the flight was the first time for them. Getting to Lagos, getting to Abuja for the visa, all the experience was the first time for the girls. And it was exciting because if we had not started, if we had not started this program, this wouldn't have happened. Getting to Silicon Valley, I knew that the only thing that is holding us from winning now is the confidence. And as a mentor, I see that these girls need more, needs to be encouraged because to compete with other six different countries from China, people that have been using technology before now, from Uzbekistan, from Russia, from USA and Canada, it was absolutely amazing. And they need that confidence to win. Silicon Valley was great. We pitched our idea. And on the final day, we were declared winners. I called it from Onicha to the world. 
wherever you are, try to make impact. We went to Onicha, to the world, to win this gold. And that was a very huge breakthrough for me, for the girls, and for the country. Imagine a healthcare market. We promise Jessica, Amara, and Uchina will be able to know the medications they are buying with the power of a mobile tech app like ours, FDG Tech 2. And then imagine a situation where physicians and providers who have the insight to detect fake drugs before prescription or during dispensary, saving the body of the neck of both the consumers and providers. Something has to be done. That's why we created a solution by developing a mobile app which we named FD Detector. In order to protect the life of the consumers, they need to distinguish between the fake and the genuine drugs. One of the greatest um, points of winning the gold medal is not just about the five girls, but at this point in Nigeria, this particular day, everybody heard about our program everybody heard about the girls and they started making inquiries about stem for those that doesn't know it was a win not just for the girls but for all the girls in nigeria and africa at that time to believe in themselves to know that you are unlimited you can be whatever you want to be you can do whatever you choose to do you can move from where you are to the world and become a champion. That was the value of winning. On the second hand, it changed the perception of our education sectors. Yes, different policies were created, even though not yet uh, on the implementation stage, but different policymakers started thinking about how we can change our curriculum and what we can do. So it was a big win for us. And we returned home to step it down to other girls. Can you imagine what the girls learned in just five to six months? This education is not the typical education you find in our curriculum that we have to go through for six years in primary school and in secondary school. In five months, they understood about computer, technology, problem solving, communication skills, digital literacy, and how to build a mobile, um, mobile app to solve societal problem, only in five to six months. Can you imagine what is happening in our education sector? Unfortunately, we have to be there for six years, plus another six years, and we won't even get an idea of what it is that will prepare us for the future of work. Our education sector is slow. The policymakers are slow in making those decisions that will aid to change our educational sector, to teach things that are relevant for the future. However, the private sector like us are not relenting. We keep doing this. We keep seeing that the future is bright and we need to bring this to the doorsteps of our children. How can we? What should we do? What should we be doing? We should be able to bring our communities together to say, this is the kind of training our youth needs. This is the kind of job that will take them out of the streets. This is the kind of job that will boost our economy using digital literacy. All hands should be on deck. We should come together as one to think about how to help starting from our community. If one person can be a mentor, if one person can sponsor someone in this education, forgetting about the university status or the secondary school, just to get a skill that will put you on the digital map, is enough for every child, every girl child or boy child to thrive. And our youth will become problem solvers. Let's talk about the girl child and what are the barriers facing them. It's not only the, the, um, the stereotypical barriers that we're talking about, 
But how about the parents, the cultural background? The parents are also not helping issues because they will not allow their child to do whatever they, she chooses. For example, a child, a girl child wants to be an engineer or a mechanical engineer. They are worried about becoming an engineer. How can you be an engineer because you will get married? How, who, who, who is going to marry you because you, are, you want to turn yourself to a mechanic? This is not the job you should be doing. They get that barrier because their parents don't want them to be that. Even the society don't believe they can do well. So for girls to thrive, they need mentors. Who are the key players on the science and tech field to mentor them? They need confidence. One of the things that encourages them is confidence, knowing that they can do this. Because most times you find intelligent, brilliant girls, but they lack self-confidence, self-awareness to do what they have to do. So we need a society that comes together to provide this enabling environment, encouragement, mentorship, sponsorship by different organizations, different individuals to, for us to achieve this. Imagine the limitless opportunity that awaits us if we embrace STEM education in the Southeast. Onicha can become an e-commerce giant. The Eva Valley in Enugu can become our own Silicon Valley and Ebony State can become a force to reckon with in the agri-tech space. All we have to do is for you and I to become the STEM voice. Thank you.